Hey everyone, it's Dominic the Primetime Treasure Hunter. Thanks a lot for coming by to check out another video. Today what I'm going to do is go over with you the top 10 most expensive vintage loose Masters of the Universe figures that you can resell on eBay. Now, I'm focusing on eBay because that is where I'm getting the values, but these values likely will transfer over to other places where you want to resell, such as Mercari or uh, whatever other online forum you like to use. Now, I'm focusing on Masters of the Universe today because Masters of the Universe is something that I have a very strong uh, affinity to. I grew up playing with Masters of the Universe figures as a kid. As you know from my videos, I have a Castle Grayskull behind me. I have Snake Mountain. I did a video uh, just a few back where I was joking around playing with two of the uh, Masters of the Universe figures. And actually, Masters of the Universe figures um, play an important role in my life because they really got me very interested in toys and also interested in comic books, believe it or not, because Masters of the Universe always came with a comic book in the back of the package. There were little mini comic books, but uh, when I got my first He-Man figure, which was actually He-Man, um, looked like this right here. I'm going to show you a close-up in just a few moments. But uh, that actually got me hooked on comics because I started reading it. I remember sitting there in the mall after my parents bought it for me in KB toy stores and just sitting there outside and just being fascinated by uh, reading it. And that got me interested in the bigger comic books. And uh, that's, uh, that's the reason why I specialize in comic books to this day in terms of the origins. It all goes back to He-Man. So I figured to kick off something that would bring in something fresh into the channel, which are these uh, top 10 lists. I, I hope to do and plan to do on, on more of these. I uh, figured why not start with where my origins really are, which is these uh, Master of the Universe figures. Now, Master of the Universe is a very big, broad category. So there's just so much. You cannot do it justice in one video. So I had to really narrow it down to, I chose to do loose figures because when you're out there sourcing, you're most likely going to find loose figures. Like right here in this big red bin, this is a whole bunch of loose Masters of the Universe figures that I sourced. So um, that's, you know, where you're likely going to find them is at, uh, you know, estate sales or garage sales. You'll see them around. Sometimes if you're, you know, looking to deal with certain collectors in certain niche areas, you're most likely going to find them loose. Now, I could do a separate video in the future in terms of ones that are packaged, uh, but those are going to be much, much more difficult to find. Now, also, another thing to keep in mind before I go into the top 10 list, a few things. Uh, one, these are admittedly going to be challenging to find because they are the top 10 most expensive ones. But you will not know at all whether or not if you do see one, whether or not it's valuable if you don't do your research, if you don't watch videos such as these to learn about certain key things that you need to be aware of. And if you have zero interest or don't know anything about Masters of the Universe figures, you still should check this video out because it could still give you some tidbits and some knowledge that will help you source certain things when you are out that you could flip for high uh, resale value. So uh, normally when I do a top 10 list and the, the top 10 list I normally do on this channel is the top 10 most expensive items that I sold in my eBay store for a certain uh, month. Uh, I start at number 10 and work my way back up to number one. We're going to do this one a little bit differently and we're actually going to do it in reverse. I'll tell you why in a moment. But if you haven't seen those um, top 10 uh, list videos, the what sold videos, just go to my playlist right here and click on the uh, what sold playlist and you'll you'll see that it'll go over to top 10 list each month. But we're going to start at the most expensive one for this video because the story behind it is so fascinating. And uh, again, even if if you're not interested in um, action figures or toys, you still might find this uh, this story very interesting in terms of this uh, number one uh, priced figure here for Masters of the Universe. You might be surprised at how much some of these things actually go for. So with that being said, with that little introduction, and uh, I'll actually give a little bit more of an introduction right here as I open up this little presentation that I put together for you. And just some basics before we uh, get into the, uh, the top 10 here. This is your average he-Man figure, what they look like, especially early on, date back to the early 1980s, and that's He-Man right there. Uh, they all had the same general 
uh, or I shouldn't say all, but because mo- there's Ram Man, and there's a few figures that are exceptions even early on. But the vast majority of them had this same general look in which they had a you know, muscular torso, muscular arms, muscular legs like that. And essentially what Mattel did, Mattel made the Master of the Universe figures, is they replaced the... Uh, head, as you can see here with this figure here, his name is Clawful, and you can see it here too, I'll put it on the screen, there's a different figure, this is uh, Zodak right there, and Zodak you can see there they just changed his head, they changed his vest around uh, compared to He-Man's, they changed Clawful's vest here too, and some of the figures had rounded feet like He-Man and some of them had webbed feet like Zodak, and you can see here with Clawful, he has webbed feet as well. So, but they had the same general type of physique, and that's the physique you would be looking for. In terms of finding the year on these figures, they're um, generally always on the back of the figure, right above the belt, as you could probably see right there. I'll show you it on the computer later where you can get a close up of it. But you're looking for ones that are in the early to mid, maybe even later 1980s. Those are going to be the ones that are mo- most valuable. In addition to that, you could see here how these figures have accessories with them. We have a sword, a shield, a gun. Those are very important with loose figures to have those because that's how you're going to get the max value. There are dramatic price decreases when you do not have the weapons or the accessories. And that includes the vest. These vests either snap off or they could just uh, you know, come off with, uh, you know, like you could see here with, uh, with He-Man's right there. That actually pulls off, so something they snap off, pull off, just depends. But it's very important that you uh, have them. And sometimes they will, uh, they will break or they might snap or they might come loose. So it's important to get them fixed back on. Like you can see this one strand of the He-Man vest is coming a little bit loose in the back. So another thing just to keep in mind for keywords when you're selling these is that you definitely want to be aware of the acronym MO2. M-O-T-U stands for Masters of the Universe. Very, very important term. You want to put that in there in your title because a lot of people won't even type in Masters of the Universe. They'll just type in MOTU when they do their search. And if you don't have that, you're going to come up short. So we're going to come back to Zodak a little bit later. I'll tell you why. There's something real important about them that relates to this uh, number one figure that I'm going to show you in just a moment. Uh, Zodak and He-Man were two of the earliest figures I um, I ever got. In fact, I think Zodak was probably number two or number three. I think my first three were He-Man, uh, Zodak, and we got Skeletor right here. They were uh, some of the early ones that I wound up getting. Now, here's, uh, here's He-Man again, and the reason why I have him here without his vest on is because I want to give you a side-by-side comparison with, with our number one figure. And our number one figure is this one right here. This actually turns out to be uh, the most sought after He-Man figure around. He's also known as Savage He-Man. And the reason why he's known as Savage He-Man is because he was made uh, around the time that uh, Mattel got into a big legal dispute with the company that made Conan, Conan the Savage Barbarian. Uh, uh, The comic book series is called The Savage Sword of Conan. Because basically what they accused Mattel of was trademark infringement of copying Conan the Barbarian um, figure and the Conan Barbarian um, you know, likeness in terms of making the He-Man figure. And this played out for many years in court. There were countersuits by Mattel. And this went on for years. And uh, you know, after years and years and years of court battles, uh, finally um, what happened is that the court sided with Mattel and basically told the company that was making Conan that, uh, sorry, but you know, you really cannot uh, claim trademark rights for a muscle-bound warrior figure because then no one's ever going to be able to make one. And so He-Man was able to go on and uh, you know have a happy, uh, pr- productive, uh, and profitable existence. But uh, because this figure is uh, it was made around that time frame, he has been referred to by fans as Savage He-Man. Now, he never had that name officially, and as far as we know, never came with an official package. I'll, I'll tell you where I believe his origins actually come from, although his origins really are to this day a mystery. No one knows definitively exactly where he came from. I mean, he was made by Mattel, 
uh, although Mattel claims no uh, records of uh, actually making him, but he was made by Mattel. It's stamped on the back as made by uh, Mattel. And Mattel may not be uh, completely telling the whole story in terms of the production of this figure because him having brown hair, he looks a lot more like Conan than the He-Man, which is uh, blonde hair. They were basically arguing that He-Man is uh, just Conan with blonde hair. And now this looks a lot more like Conan. So Mattel probably doesn't want to say too much about, you know, hey, uh, you know, this is something we made right around that uh, time frame that we were involved in this legal dispute with uh, the company that makes Conan. So uh, when he showed up initially, uh, he often showed up like this. He was bare chested. Uh, but there were other times where he showed up like this. And he had this black vest on the outside of him. And people started to um, try to figure out where the heck does he come from. And if you look at his vest, it bears uh, a very strong similarity because it's uh, identical, except in terms of color, to Zodak's vest right there. You see that W here. Now this W, it's not really a W, but it kind of looks like a W. And that... Uh, kind of played in to where people thought he came from initially. People didn't really see this connection at first in terms of these two figures and that all he was basically wearing was a black version of this red vest. Well, the reason why people started to think that he came from Wonder Bread and he is often referred to actually as Wonder Bread He-Man is when people were trying to figure out where this figure came from because he started popping up on eBay in the 1990s and initially people thought it was fake that this was some made up figure but it's not it's an actual legitimate Masters of the Universe figure and then people started to figure out where the heck did he come from and some people were um, you know starting to think back and they're saying well I remember that there was this uh, promotion that Wonder Bread did and this is the promotion right here this is actually um, one of the coupons for it and uh, it, it actually shows that, you know, hey, if you pick up the, this Wonder Bread, you're going to get 15 Masters of the Universe cards. They're trading cards. And they look like this. And, um, you know, they were just inside the package. And people started, you know, they remember that. And then they saw this W that showed up. And they said, wait a minute, W, Wonder Bread. He must have come from the Wonder Bread promotion. But there was no Wonder Bread promotion in which you would send in and get an action figure. The Wonder Bread promotion was just for the cards. So even though he is commonly referred to as Wonder Bread He-Man, and you could look this up, there's whole articles written about this and videos and all sorts of stuff, uh, but that is why he's called Wonder Bread He-Man. But it really, all that happened here was that he was just basically given the same vest as Zodak. That's it. And that's why he... Uh, that's why he has that uh, um, symbol on him that looks like a W. And in fact, I'm going to show you a little bit later on where that vest came from. And it comes from a weapons pack and how much money you could get from that weapons pack. But this coupon right here, I believe my theory is that, and it's not my theory alone, other people have this theory as well, that this is where this figure comes from, which is a promotion that was actually done by Mattel in which if you bought one of these four figures, one of which is a Masters of the Universe figure, Manny Faces, he might look familiar to you uh, because a couple of videos ago I pretended I was playing with him and Skeletor at the beginning of a video. So uh, Manny Faces right down there, if you bought him or you bought the Barbie doll or you know the Dazzle doll, the other doll, um, you would uh, fill out a form on the back and then they would send you a toy in the mail. And I believe that the toy that they sent people was this uh, He-Man that is basically He-Man in every way, shape, or form, except he has uh, different color hair, and you know, as you can see you know, here, he's doing different color uh, boots and different color uh, waist area. That's it. Um, so I believe that's actually where he came from. I'm going to skip back over here. Um and this is just a bigger version of the Manny Face figure that I was showing you earlier. So if you bought him as the uh, Master Universe figure or one of those other three, you would get uh, this guy sent to you in the mail. Now, 
I don't believe that he likely came with this shield on him. I think this, oh, I shouldn't say shield, the vest. I think the vest was something people were putting on him from here because you can see here, this was a weapons pack that you could purchase and we have the red arrow down here pointing to that black vest. So I think people were popping that black vest off and putting on this character. Now, if you find this weapons pack, this weapons pack, if everything's in it and it's sealed, you could resell just this weapons pack for 70 bucks, max. These are max values. All the values that I'm gonna give you in this video are max. So it might go for less, but you know you could definitely get as high as $70 on it. Now, is it possible that he could have been shipped out with this black vest on it? Yes, don't know for sure, but I think people are likely just applying that vest on him from the weapons pack. That's my, my theory on that. Now, um, later on, uh, in I believe it was around 2010, uh, Mattel basically gave homage to the lore around this figure and recreated him. And they named him Wundar, W-U-N-D-A-R, in obvious homage to Wonder Bread. And this is why, as you can see down here, he comes actually with a loaf of bread. It's pretty funny. Uh, and you have to know this because while they're both valuable figures, you have to be able to know the differences. And you could see there are very obvious differences between the two figures right here. This is the one that's worth a lot of money, uh, you know, like big money. This one is worth money, but just not as much. So this one um, from 2010, he, you could get $160 out of them loose. Uh, but it's a lot different from what you would get if you had an original uh, Savage He-Man, which is uh, $650 max at this current time. Keep in mind, I don't know when you're watching this video. You might be watching this a year or two years after I make it. So these values are all valid as of February uh, 2019. So make sure you're aware of the differences. Now, the other thing, just to keep in mind... I told you there's there's actually a whole literature on this particular He-Man figure right here, the one to the the right, the vintage uh, Savage He-Man. Now, uh, you have to be able to know how to detect the difference between fakes and between uh, real ones, because there are some people who have gone out and faked to make this uh, Savage He-Man. So there's lots of ways. There's many many ways to figure out uh, whether it's fake or real. So there's actual articles on it. So just Type that in if you're interested in learning more about it. I could actually do a whole separate video on that, but I don't want to make the video any longer than uh, than it needs to be. Uh, now, the reason why this figure goes in what I call uh, loose vintage figures is because I do not believe, and there is no record of this figure ever coming in a sealed package. Unlike the Wondar figure that came with the loaf of bread that I just showed you, he did come with the package. So this is the 2010 one right over here, but this is the vintage one, and I believe this is very likely what someone would have gotten the mail from a mail away. They would have just gotten something in a clear plastic bag. Um, you know, uh, In fact, to throw the fear out even more as I'm thinking about it uh, here, you know, it could be that Mattel maybe originally made uh, a bunch of these right here and thought, you know what, this looks too much like Conan and we'll just, but we have all these that we made, let's just give them away and maybe just gave them away as part of a giveaway and, you know, probably did just change his hair color just to, you know, make it not look so obvious that it's Conan. Uh, but that, you know, that's one possibility in terms of origin. They were just trying to kind of get rid of overstock and just kind of, you know, put them in these, uh, giveaways that again i believe likely came from uh this promotion that you see uh well that i showed you earlier from that uh buy three and uh get one free i that's that's what i think it likely came from so that's the number one so now the other ones they're gonna go much quicker because they don't have as big of a story as this one now this one here is Bluebeard Stratos. And I actually have a Stratos right here. It's one of the earlier figures I had as well when I was a kid. Stratos is a good guy. He flies. He's got this little uh, red jet pack here, and he flies in the air, and he helps He-Man out. Uh, but as you can see, normally, and I'll put it up on the screen as well, uh, The and you can see what this one's worth having a blue beard. The original Stratos does not have a blue beard. And I, they're both original Stratoses, but the uh, most commonly found Stratos, I should say, has a gray beard like this one, 
not a blue beard. But there were some made with a blue beard. It's amazing the price difference. Just that one change, that blue beard, makes this one worth $500. If you have this one loose, it's worth about $50. So um, that's, uh, you know, that's the difference of uh, what a minor change in color can do to the, uh, the popularity and the expense of a figure. So that's Blue Beard Stratos. If you ever see that figure, check to see if there's a blue beard on it. If so, you have got some good money on your hand because that one's going to flip for a high dollar amount. Definitely. Now, He-Man was not only made in the, uh, in the United States. He was mostly made in the United States, but there was a bigger... Uh, action figure, a bigger He-Man figure, uh, 18 inches, that was made in South America. And he's also referred to as Giant He-Man. And if you ever find Giant He-Man, Giant He-Man is worth $350. So uh, that's a uh, good one to look for. It comes with this big sword and that type of stuff. So I uh, went a little bit ahead of myself there, but as you can see here, we've got a glow-in-the-dark figure. Now, you know, uh, it looks like I mistyped up there, but he's from, I believe, 1986, uh, not the year 198. He's not quite that old, so it's a typo on my part. But uh, his name is Scareglow, and he does show up from time to time. Now, he is um, he's challenging to find, but he does show up. As you can see there on the right, he does glow in the dark, so that's a really cool feature about him that makes him popular. And Scare Glow is now we start to go down in price, but still, you know, $265 max value for Scare Glow. If you look on any given month, there's usually a few of these that wind up pop, you know, popping up online. So they're out there. You just have to look for them. You just have to look for them, and you have to know what to look for. You know, if you saw a bunch of junky action figures laying in a bin, and you saw this one next to it, you know, if you don't know what to look for, you're just gonna pass by it and just think uh, they're all junk. So that's why it's important to do your do your research like watching a video like this could really help you out. Uh, now, the only other foreign He-Man that I'm going to show you is Italian He-Man. And uh, Italian He-Man, the way you can tell it's Italian He-Man is one, unlike the brown boots that the regular He-Man has, uh, this one has silver and he has uh, silver gloves on as well. And he also has more yellow hair. You can see it's a much brighter yellow. In addition to that, uh, he has some type of hole on his back for reasons I don't know. It's kind of heart shaped. Uh, it's kind of weird. I'm not sure why that's uh, why that's in there. That might be to stick uh, a sword in or an accessory or something like that. Uh, also, what you could see here on the back now, you'd have to zoom in, but uh, I don't know how well you could see it. But right here it says Mattel, and right underneath it it says Italy. So the country is sta is uh, stamped right on the back there, in 1987. Uh, you know, chances you're going to find this to be very, very low, but they are out there and they do show up. All these things that I'm showing you are all things that have shown up on eBay in the last 60 days and have sold. So they're out there. People are finding them, uh, but they're in limited quantities. So this one has a value of $250, 250 max value on Italian He-Man. Now, remember earlier when I told you that some He-Man figures started to take on different types of shapes and designs? Like, you know, you can see here, this one here that I have in my hands is called the, uh, the Evil Leech. You know, he has a much different type of uh, body figure than He-Man right there. He's got suction cups for legs. He actually sucks onto the, uh, you know, onto, onto the glass or... Um, you know, onto like plasticky types of areas. And so they started to get more creative as time went on with their figures and then started to make things that, you know, looked absolutely nothing like the regular uh, normal uh, He-Man figures. And they were like robotic ones. And they made ones that were like tops that spun around. And it's very important for this one, which is known as Twistoid, that you have the accessories that come with it because what you would do is you you know attach them uh, you know to the figure and that would help make it spin around and twist and that's why he's called Twistoid. Twistoid uh, and and they, he comes up from time to time too on eBay. Any given time you'll see two, three, four of them up uh, you know a month on on eBay. Uh, he'll go for a max of about two hundred and forty dollars. That's Twistoid. So. You know, just get that visual in your head. A lot of this in terms of going through these is just to get that visual in your head. So then you say, wait a minute, if you see it, you know, that looked familiar. Didn't I see that on the Primetime Treasure Hunter video? I think so. Let me go back and look, you know. 
Uh, this one here, King Randor. Now, King Randor is rare. He's, uh, he's He is a vintage figure. He's tough to find. He is actually a Prince Adam's father. Now, if you're wondering who the heck is Prince Adam, Prince Adam is uh, basically who turns into He-Man. Um, so, uh, he's like the... Um, uh, the the non uh, superhero version of he's like like uh, as Clark Kent is to Superman, Prince Adam is to uh, He Man. So that's kind of how it works. And this is his father, and also uh, he is Shira's uh, father. Now we're not getting into Shira here. There are uh, probably a lot of uh, uh, girl fans out there who uh, would like a Shira video, and if so, let me know that, and I could put together a Shira video as well. Because there are expensive She-Ra videos out there. That was basically the He-Man version for the for the girls. But uh, we're gonna focus on the uh, the actual He-Man series and maybe the She-Ra another day. Let me know. So King Randor, he is sought after. He's around two hundred dollars max. If you could find him, remember you have to have things like the staff and accessories. Uh, he has to have his cape on, that sort of stuff to command that type of value. Now this one here is known as Rotar. Rotar also spins around, uh, very much like the Twistoid figure. Um, and you can see here he has a similar accessory right there on the bottom that helps him spin and that sort of stuff. So uh, you have to have all these things. But if you have all these things for Rotar, he's close to around 200 bucks if you could find Rotar. Uh, the Sorceress. Now the Sorceress is He-Man's uh, friend. She uh, often chills out at Castle Grayskull. And she gives He-Man all sorts of wise tips on what to do, and you know, uh, you know, she she could cast magical spells and all sorts of stuff. And there was a uh, she you could see there she's got a um, like bird feathers that are in the back, and she could turn into a flying creature known as uh, Zor. And I don't know if I have Zor around here, but yeah, I actually think I do. So this is actually kind of common. You'll see this around a lot. This is Zor. Uh, so this is what the sorceress would turn into, and she'd fly away. You see this a lot in the He-Man Master Universe uh, cartoon that was on, very popular in the in the 80s. This figure, though, was uh, very hard to find, very challenging. Not a lot of people had this one. Uh, if you were able to find this one, this one would go for $185 max. If you have the uh, if you have the staff and you know, make sure you have the wings and the headgear and all that kind of stuff. And also condition is important too. So, you know, if all the paint is off and stuff, that's gonna degrade the value. So, you know, these these figures that I'm giving you here, the in terms of monetary figures, you know, all assume, you know, pretty good condition and um, having the accessories. And this is our last one, I believe. This is uh, Ninjor. Ninjor go for $175 if you can find him. Uh, challenging uh, figure to find. I never had this one. I don't even actually remember seeing it. I mean, there were some that were just pretty obscure. They didn't really, um, you know, make a lot of them. And so that's why, you know, you have certain ones out there that are just really hard and uh, challenging to find figures. So I hope that you enjoyed that presentation. I really had fun doing it. I've wanted to do something like this for a really long time. It obviously does require some preparation to put together those slides and to you know do some of the research for you to get you some of the most up-to-date figures. But if you found this helpful and if you liked it, I know I've got a lot of Masters of the Universe fans out there. I've had some people tell me, uh, the main reason they initially subscribed to my channel is because they saw Castle Grayskull behind me. So I feel that this uh, channel also owes a debt of gratitude to Castle Grayskull and Master Universe. So I wanted to put this video together. And uh, I will do other top 10 lists and other categories besides toys. Just let me know if you like it. You know, I, I, I look at this as not only my channel, but your channel as well. And I gauge what I do based on what you're asking and what, uh, you know, asking for, what kind of things you're interested in. Of course, it's up to me sometimes to be creative and come up with new ideas. And so it's just another way to kind of keep content fresh. Obviously, not every video is going to be like this, but, uh, you know, this is another type of video I want to sprinkle in from time to time. So let me know. I'd like to hear your feedback down in the comments. And if there's another category you'd like me to do, let me know what it is, and uh, I can't promise I will do it, but uh, I will definitely give it uh, very strong consideration and uh, write it down and uh, put a little list together, and hopefully at some point I will get to it. Uh, so uh, that's about it. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, you might want to go over to Thrift Traders. 
uh, awesome YouTube channel. I was on there tonight for a live show. Uh, that was on the 10th, actually. Uh, it's late at night right now. It's 3.15 in the morning <laughs> as I'm doing this video. But I really wanted to get this done before the week started because I have a crazy week ahead. I didn't know when I was going to get to it. So I wanted to make sure I got this done. But that was fun. I was on with Wade and Scott the Bearded Picker and... Uh, you know, Chris and Rise and Grind Picker. It was a really fun time. The Sunday show, loved it. So go down. We talked about um, different places where you could expand in terms of sourcing. So uh, go check that out. Go over to uh, Thrift Traders. That was a fun time over there. And I'm sure I'll be uh, over there some other times uh, in the future as well. Uh, just kind of floating uh, between the different channels. Uh, make sure you come over to my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. The link is down below. Make sure you come check me out on Instagram. That's at prime underscore time underscore treasure. I have lots of video tips that I put on there, unique uh, content that I don't put on this channel. So if you like the stuff you see here, you'll probably like the stuff there as well. And with that being said, I've got to wrap this one up. I've got a lot of things to do, and I've got to be up at... Mm, about seven o'clock at the latest. So I want to try to get a little sleep here tonight and start off the week with a bang. I'll see everyone later. Hope everyone has a great week ahead, no matter when it is that you find this video. Take care, everyone.